Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Bricks Do More PLC using Modbus IO Scanner Profile. Now the Do More Designer Programming Software 2.9 or higher includes a Modbus IO Scanner with some profiles for Modbus server or slave devices. This will greatly reduce the time it takes to implement and troubleshoot communications in your projects. Modbus communications are done independent of the PLC scan time and will will have little or no ladder logic for the program itself. Last time we communicated to a solo process temperature controller via the Modbus RTU RS45 twisted pair. We manually set the Modbus IO scanner reading the present value or PV value and set value SV of the solo. The writing of the set value located within the BRICS Dumor uh, controller was also done. This was also done without using any ladder logic code. We will now use the Modbus profile in the Modbus IO scanner to connect the Click PLC Plus to our RS45 network. And using the Modbus scanner write and read instruction, we will show how to use the ladder logic code with our scanner. Let's get started. And the first thing we will do is take a look at our actual hardware that we have here. And you'll see that we have our Bricks Do More located right here and we have our RS45 communication, which is our twisted pair. And it's going back to our, over to our solo process temperature controller. And then from the solo, we daisy chain that over to our Click Plus PLC through the RS45 communication port that we see here. So that is our basic setup that we have with our uh, unit. And we are communicating through the Click through our Wi-Fi connection and we're communicating to the bricks through our, our uh, ethernet connection located right here. And the purpose is to use the profiles in the bricks do more in order to uh, communicate to our solo and set the, the set value of the solo. So the first thing we will do, the next thing we will do is take a look at the click PLC and the RS45 port setup. So here is my click programming software. And if I go into um, setup and then we'll go COM port, we can see here are our COM ports that we have listed. And port number three is actually our RS45. So we'll set up, we'll click on setup. You can see that it's set for Modbus. Our node address is actually node address number two. Our baud rate matches our previous setting, which is 9600. The parity is even, stop bits are one, and the data uh, rate is eight. We will leave the default timeout settings and the character timeout set codes and everything in response to delay time. So hit okay, so that's all set up. And basically we will not have a, um, a program within this controller. So next, what we'll do is take a look at our Modbus IO scanner configuration. So going over to our uh, Do More Designer version 2.9 or higher. Currently right now, I'm uh, looking at version 2.91. We call up our system configuration by going under our project browser and under tools, you'll see system configuration. We'll also see configuration up here, or we can go PLC and then system configuration. All of these different options will get you to the same location. And last time we set up our serial port, we have the RS45 right here, and our parameters were located right here, and which we had the um, 9600, eight, one, even. And that's how we uh, set up the port, which matches the same settings as our now our click and our solo. Okay. Then we go to our Modbus IO scanner. Now, when we're in our scanner, you can see that we already have our previous Modbus um, solo that we created last time. And we'll just double click into that. We've modified it slightly because we only allowed reads in here. So last time we had a write, so we eliminated that write. Simply because if we kept that in, the scanners automatically sequence through and automatically will update. So last time we had a write from V2. So every time anything went into V2, it always wrote every 100 milliseconds. So that means that no other device on the network could actually 
communicate to that device. So if I were to try to put something onto the Solo itself and increase the set value, it would overwrite by this instruction here every 100 milliseconds. So we eliminated that and only had reads now into our Solo. Then we've added a profile. So if we look in the, the click profile, you'll see that it's under the click generic. And you can see that we select here and there's my uh, generic click CPU. And when it brings that back, um, what it will do is start reading. It has basically four reads. It reads the inputs, the X. It reads the outputs, the Y. It reads the coils, the C, and it reads the holding registers, which is the DS. So DS1 to DS16, and it holds that in there or brings it back in. So again, our scanner only reads information back in. So we'll say okay to that. And that is our scanner itself. And you can see, if I go back in, that it actually puts it in the click PLC, the name in which I actually gave it. Again, we're going to Modbus client right here, and we have our unit ID number two here. Now, remember that detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca, and his link's been put in the description below. Now, if you have watched, not watched any other videos, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So let's hit cancel for that. And the other thing is, because we're not writing anything, we'll set up another write. So we'll add another blank one, and we'll choose the Modbus here. We're going to use unit number two. And we're going to add a com, and we're going to actually write multiple registers. And we'll start at one, and we'll do a two count. Hit OK. And then we'll add a add field, and our field will actually be our um, variables, our solo write and read values. So we'll put in this field name. Um, and it'll be uh, click right uh, set value or present value and we will get the information from V0 of our bricks and then we'll add another field field name and then we'll call this uh, click right SV or set value. And again, we will have a offset of one. So that gives our second variable. Um, and we will use V one. So going back to this first one, We'll actually only have one word. There we go. So that looks, makes more sense. We re, we're going to write two registers. The first one, um, our present value, into from uh, V1 and V2 onto our second one. So let's hit OK. And again, it tells us that we, we've changed the profile. We'll say um, oh, yes. And we'll give this a name. We'll set uh, right SV um, PV to click and just hit OK. And we'll just give it a, a name. And there we go. So now we have three different ones here, which now will work. There we go. So we'll say, okay. And now it asks us that we have to transfer this down to our solo. So we'll just write that into our controller. So that is our Modbus IO scanner configuration now complete. So 
we right now are we can now look at our bricks do more ladder logic that we'll actually have and now our ladder logic um, will allow us to write vari vari variables into our controller so the first one here you have our ladder you'll see that if our bricks or our click PLC output D3 is not equal to zero. So we're going to use D3. So we used DS1 and 2 for variables V0 and V1, which is our, our process uh, value and our set value of our solo. We're going to move then DS3, which will be a right value from our click into our solo right value, which is our V2 of our controller. Now V2 here contains the value of zero, then we don't do anything. But if it's not zero, because we've changed it here or changed it within our, our code, then what we want to do is we use a Modbus IO scanner registered write instruction. And what this will do, just uh, cancel that and we'll go into edit mode, bring this up. And we're going to write a single register, which is 44098, which is the uh, set value of our solo itself on our Modbus network. So we're going to write that single register and we're going to bring it from our solo write set value, which is uh, V2 of our bricks controller. And on a success of this instruction, we will set C2. And if it's an error, we set C3. And cancel that and so that is what that instruction will actually do for us if we look down further on our instruction you will see next what we'll do is we'll say if we don't have uh, v2 as set to zero and we have the success here of writing our new instruction then what we will do is we will actually zero out the click plc so we'll write to address uh, 4003 and make that zero indicating that we have created or set our set value within that controller and then finally once we have a success on that bit which comes from um, the next bit or c4 then what we do is we zero out v3 um, or we move zero into our set value of our solo which is v2 so we take V3, which is zero, set it into that uh, output. So then that will set that or zero that out. So all the timing here just allows us to, doesn't matter if we're using the click PLC, the bricks PLC, or the solo directly, we can set the set value. And we can actually see that happening. So let's, let's, all, let's go back to our First of all, let's go back to our click program. And here it is right here. And under the click program, what we have is our um, data view. In our data view, you'll see that this is DS1 and DS2. And currently right now, because our bricks is actually running, you will see that we have the value, the present value of 20.7 which we have here, and we have the set value of 12.3. If I were to change DS3 here to a new value, we'll say uh, 200 representing 20.0, and we'll write that in, you'll see that automatically we now change the solo to 20.0. And then we zero that back out again, indicating that it now has taken. So our program seems to be working just the way we expected it to. If we take a look at our solo itself, we can increase that temperature. And again, that will allow us to increase the temperature. And then we see that reflected actually within our uh, uh, data view of our click. We also see that if we go back to our solo or our bricks PLC and we call up our data view, you'll see that we now have 
our solo present value, our set value, our write value, and then we have what our click PLC is actually doing as well. So here we can, again, edit our set value and we'll put in the value 111. And we can write that in. You can see automatically that it will write that in. We have the set value put in and then it zeros it back out again. So very simple and easy to implement this logic. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.